Hi everyone! Star Wars is a pretty complicated franchise of series and movies, so in this recap video, we'll focus on breaking down the common terms and people in Star Wars, making it more easy to navigate the world. Timestamps are in the description below. We will first focus on the governing bodies within their universe, like who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, then the Skywalker family tree and some of their close acquaintances, the chronological wash order of the material that's out or coming out soon, and lastly we'll end on the weapons of mass destruction that play tribute to the name of Star Wars. Major spoilers are ahead. Let's get started. Okay, so once upon a time there was a universe and in the universe the governing body was called the Republic or the Galactic Republic and then later on when especially when there was the New Republic it was called the Old Republic or the Old Galactic Republic anyway so this Republic had a Senate the Galactic Senate and the Senate was made up of uh, a representative from every single planet, and they made decisions about the whole galactic universe. And the Senate, under the Senate, they had the Jedi Order, which was basically their peacekeepers. They would go into battle, keep the peace. They were kind of like soldiers slash monks because they use the force and the force, especially the light force, was a power source that requires the user not to be overly attached to things, not to be super emotional, to meditate, to be very zen. So to use the light force, you have these monk-like Jedi Knights with lightsabers that go out and keep the peace on orders of the Galactic Senate, and the Senate is what runs the Galactic Republic. So that is why the signs of the Republic, the Old Galactic Republic, looks like this, which is very similar to the Galactic Senate and the Jedi Order. If you kind of merge them together, you would kind of get this sign. Later on, the Galactic Republic, the sign changed to this, which looks a bit like a sun, and it looks very similar to the Sith sign, but this one, the good Galactic Republic sign, if you think of it as a sun, it has eight lines coming out of it. The Sith, the bad guys, they have six lines or arrows coming out of it. Also, the Empire has six coming out of it. So, Empire, bad, has six. If it has eight, that's good slash neutral. That's the old Galactic Republic. If it's this sign, then that's the older version of the Republic Galactic Republic sign. And then the New Republic sign looks very much like the Jedi Order or the Old Republic sign, where it's this sign. And it's actually, basically, the Rebellion had this sign. And so the New Republic, because the Rebellion created the New Republic, that's why the sign didn't change, just the color changed and you have some stars for the planets that are in the Republic. Uh, anyway, back to this. So, Jedi Order, they're good. They work under the Senate in the Republic. They use the Light Force. They're not allowed to marry because they don't want them to be overly attached or super emotional, you know. So, during the Hundred Year Darkness, uh, basically, a portion of the Jedi Order broke off and became the bad Sith Order. So, the Sith Empire, Sith Order, that's their sign. And because, obviously, they were under the Jedi Order, because they broke off, they're still working under the Republic. So, different Sith leaders are part of the Republic. And this, quick spoiler, for example, Steve Palpatine, he is a senator in the Old Republic, and he basically 
what happens is the Sith Order creates the New Order, which it's the New Order because it broke off from the Jedi Order. So it broke off and it's the New Order. And Palpatine, he's basically in charge of this New Order. And so they take down the old Galactic Republic and form the Empire. So the Empire, basically the same as the Sith with its little sign. That's the Empire logo sign right here. Join the Empire, this right here. Um, and that kind of allows you, because you'll see it on uniforms, so you'll be able to figure out what's happening or who's talking about what, depending on what signs they have on them or what they're talking about. Um, the Jedi Order, after the New Order, created the Empire. So they started you know, attacking other planets. In response to the New Order slash the Empire, the Rebellion started, or the Rebel Alliance, which is people against the New Order, against the Empire, trying to take down the Empire, and trying to form um, a new Republic. So the Rebellion Rebel Alliance, their slogan you could say is a new dawn. They really wanted a new dawn, a new Republic, and they took down the Empire and created the New Republic. So that's the Rebellion sign, that's the New Republic sign. Uh, which if you know some Star Wars, it's like Leia, she was in charge of the Rebellion and she was in charge of the Resistance. So. When the Rebellion Rebel Alliance took down the Empire and they formed the New Republic, the, when the Empire broke from the ashes of the bad Empire, the First Order was created. So, as you can see here, a lot of the same gear remained. Uh, Stormtroopers, uh, TIE pilots right here. The gear didn't really change. The only thing is the sign of the New Order was the sign, the Empire, the First Order was the sign. Not too different, a bit similar. While when the New, when the First Order did get created and it took over, the First Order basically destroyed the New Republic and in response to the First Order, the rebels against them was the Resistance. So it was the Resistance against the First Order. So their sign, the Resistance sign, and the Rebellion sign is the same exact sign. So it is the same sign on their uniforms, but the Resistance slogan was a spark of hope because they're the final stand, the final Resistance. And Basically, the bad guys are usually in heavy gear, armor, lots of uniforms. The good guys are usually in uh, street clothes or like Buddhist monk, like Zen, floating, you know, light clothing. The only time when they're really in gear is if they're pilots, so they'll be wearing usually red with the logo. So, for example, Resistance X Fighters, they um, for example, Poe uh, Dameron, he's right here, he's a Resistance fighter, and he flies the Resistance X fighters, um, as opposed to the bad guys, who are the TIE fighter pilots, and that's a TIE fighter, so the little, it looks like an eyeball with two flat pieces, as opposed to this, which looks like a plane, usually the wings are together and then the, the then it goes it like opens up and that's where the x wing formation happens where it like separates out and it gives you the x that's how you know which aircraft is good which aircraft is bad and then just to finish out on the uniforms so stormtroopers bad guys they were white their ground support that's dark vader he wears a helmet, but that's because he needs it to breathe, but his uniform is different. 
Uh, same thing here, Kylo Ren is wearing kind of black and his little Ren fighters over here are wearing different gear. So as long as it's something that's not standard issue, then you know that they're higher up in command. If it's very standard, something that looks like this, then they're probably low tier soldiers. Um, some, like, if this is a bunch of stormtroopers, if there's one stormtrooper with a little red plate on his shoulder, then you know that they're probably leading the unit. So that's how they categorize themselves. But one thing is that the lower tiered soldiers are not allowed to take off their helmets and they're not allowed to be referred to by names because they haven't earned the right to take off their helmets or to have names. So that's why you hear them refer to each other by letter or number combinations. Once they get higher up, they're able to not wear a helmet because they've earned the right to be seen. So uh, right here, the Empire, you have Grand Moff Tarkin, and he's just wearing kind of like a suit. And then in the First Order, you have General Hux, who's also wearing a suit, and here he is in the animation. So as you can see right here, his little sign is the First Order sign while you can't see in this uniform, but he would have had a little uh, empire sign, which would have been this, which looks very similar to the Sith sign. And so here's a little, a fun little representation where the pilots, the TIE pilots, they usually wear black. However, a major, Major Von Reg, he's wearing a red, uh, it's the same exact uniform, but it's in red instead of black. So, you know, he's higher up. He reports to Captain Plasma. She's wearing a stormtrooper outfit, but instead of having a white stormtrooper suit and helmet, she's wearing kind of like a silver black color, meaning she's higher up than all of the other stormtroopers. Plus, she has a very long cape over her shoulder, as opposed to just a small little plate on her shoulder, meaning she's extremely high up. And she reports to Commander Pyre, who's wearing all gold. So you get to give her a silver, she's a little lower down, she's the captain. He's wearing gold, he's the commander, he's basically the highest ground support stormtrooper there is. And he reports to General Hux, who's wearing basically a suit, because he's so high up that he's earned the right to be seen, basically. Now, there's one disclaimer in... Uh, people in gear and helmets are bad, people without helmets are good, and that's the Mandalorians. So, the Mandalorians are a completely different clan, and originally they are with the Sith and the Empire, because they don't like the Jedi, they think they're like weird wizards wielding the force and they they don't really like them. So they actually join up with the Sith and they fight the Jedi in the Jedi Mandalorian War where they lose a lot of people. But um, they're, if you're watching the show The Mandalorian, you'll see that they're basically neutral in that the Mandalorian right here, he doesn't really care and he actually helps the Jedi. So. They're not necessarily bad or good. It just depends on where they are in the timeline in the universe. You can maybe think of it as the Sith trick them into working for them. The Sith used Jango Fett. Um, he was originally cloned for all of the clones that were used in the Clone Wars. Um, all of the stormtroopers were clones of Jango Fett. And um, just to really quickly talk about the helmets, the way that you can tell them apart is that the bad guys, their eyepieces are separate. They're like two separate eyepieces. They don't have any down parts. Same thing with the TIE Fighters. They're two different eyepieces. That's what they look like. They're bad guys. The Mandalorians, on the other hand, their eyepieces are always like across. And the Stormtroopers, TIE Fighters, they don't have any difference between female and male soldiers. Um, on the other hand, the Mandalorians do have a difference 
in their helmets where the guys will have the straight across and the girls will have more of a curvy eyepiece for their helmets and then they'll always go down. So that's how you know they're Mandalorians. And you can see right here, Django's a guy, he's straight across. Boba Fett's straight across. Uh, Din is straight across. And one thing also, um, the bad guys, their armor is pretty easily penetrated. It's not very strong. The Mandalorians, they use Beskar for their, um, it's Mandalorian iron, and it's basically like bulletproof. Uh, it's laser proof. It's uh, lightsaber proof. It's, it's basically indestructible. So they're the only clan that's really big um, with using the Beskar, and they really know how to wield it. Other people in the universe don't really know how to use it, and this is their sign, Mandalorian clan sign. And just to give you a quick overview of the Mandalorians, so they were their own planet. They lost a lot of people in the Jedi Mandalorian War. Um, originally, um, Satine, the she's she was like a pacifist. She was a duchess, and she was against fighting. And she wanted the Mandalorians to be peaceful. Unfortunately, she died, and her sister. Her younger sister, Bo-Katan, is the last royal family member of the Mandalorian clan. So she kind of, even though her sister was a duchess, she's technically elevated up to a princess. And she's trying to regain the Mandalorian's glory. Um, you see her both in the Mandalorian show, and you also see her in the Clone Wars. So you have several pop-ups there. Um, Jango Fett. Again, Clone Wars, because he was cloned into the Clone Troopers, Stormtroopers. Um, he had an unaltered clone son named Boba Fett. And Boba Fett is seen in The Mandalorian. And then he's also going to get his own series called The Book of Boba Fett, where it will follow The Mandalorian's uh, storyline some more. But The Mandalorian show itself was actually following Din right here, who was referred to as The Mandalorian. And the one interesting thing about him compared to the other Mandalorians is that he was uh, from a cult of the Mandalorian clan called the Children of the Watch, where they're very archaic and they're not allowed to take off their helmet in front of any kind of living creature. If they do, then they can never put the helmet back on. So that is the way. And they uh, basically... So that's why he always wears a helmet in his show, and that's why Bo-Katan and other characters like Boba Fett, they take off their helmet freely, they put it back on, they don't have any issues with it, but that is because he was from a different subsection of the Mandalorian clan. And in the Mandalorian show, the premise of that series is that he finds this little kid, he's this force creature who's able to use the force kind of like Yoda but this little baby kid or he's referred to as kid or the child he's basically the package they want to basically take the force out of him the new order does however the Mandalorian saves him and wants to bring him to the Jedi Knights that way they can train him to use the force because again since Din is from the children of the watch Another thing that is part of their way is that if they find a child, they either have to raise it as their own or they have to give it back to its people. And the Jedi are basically almost extinct at this point of the Mandalorian series. So he's trying to find some, locate some Jedi Knights to reunite them. And you find out later on that the little kid's name is Groku when he telepathically talks to a Jedi Knight. So... That's just a quick little overview of some characters in gear compared to bad guys in gear right here compared to the good guys and some um, the governing bodies and things that are referenced. Just quick overview again, Republic, Old Galactic Republic, good guys, New Republic, good guys, Empire, New Order, First Order, bad guys. Jedi Order, good guys.
And then we're gonna go to the family tree over here, the Skywalkers who are basically the main characters, along with some of the um, villains, which mainly the, the main person that's the bad guy is um, Palpatine. And he's brought back throughout all of the shows and movies and everything. He's basically like the final boss. He's pulling the strings. He's like never dead. He's always alive. He keeps coming back. So uh, you can't go wrong just having him as the bad guy. First off, if there's yellow, that means that they train them. If it's green, they're good guys. If it's red, they're bad guys. And the blue I just made for like if they're friends and stuff or connected. Anyway, to start off, main character, the original Skywalker that starts off this whole Star Wars universe franchise is Anakin Skywalker. You see him as a child, a teenager, young adult, and then as an adult. He's a good guy for a majority of the series, but his strong emotional attachments, his fear, um, turns him to the dark side and he becomes Darth Vader. And one thing for you to note is that it's not Dark Vader, it's Darth Vader. And Darth is another word for Sith Lord. So he's the Sith Lord Vader, as opposed to Palpatine. He's Darth, or Sith Lord, uh, Sidious. So that's what the Darth stands for. Anyway, back to Anakin. When he's a good guy, he falls in love with Padme, who's a queen, royal queen Padme, uh, Amadilla. She has a lot of costume changes. These aren't even all of her costume changes, so... Um, that's his love interest, who he marries. Since he's afraid of losing her, he become he falls into the dark side, becomes Darth Vader, um, and he doesn't know that she is pregnant and gives birth to twins, who are Luke Skywalker and Leia Skywalker. Um, originally, Anakin is trained by Obi Wan Kenobi, right here, and Yoda. They train him, Anakin. They also train his son, Luke. Anakin, on the other hand, he, when he's a young adult, right here in the Clone Wars, he trains Ahsoka Tano, who is his Padawan. And a Padawan is basically an apprentice to a Jedi Knight or a Jedi Knight trainee. That's what a Padawan is. So she's a kid Padawan in Clone Wars, and then in the Mandalorian series, she's one of the last Jedi Knights. So that's Ahsoka. And so Padme, Anakin have the twins. Because Anakin's on the dark side and Padme dies giving birth to them, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda take the twins and they hide them away. They take Princess Leia, who's right here. Here she is in the animated series. Um, they take her and they give her to the Organa royal family. Raha is the queen. And so she lives in, on this peaceful planet as a princess. And her mother was a queen, so she's technically double royalty, where both her, both her real mother and her adopted mother are both queens. Luke, on the other hand, is trained by Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda in Tatooine. So he becomes a Jedi Knight because he's trained in the way of the Jedi. And they don't know about each other. They also don't know who their father is or their mother. Um, here they are, Luke and Leia, when they're older in the last three movies. But basically what happens is when the Empire comes into power, they attack uh, the Argana royal family and their planet Al Ab Ableron. Ableron. Um, so 
Leia wants to stop them, so she calls out for help, and she becomes the leader of both the Rebellion against the Empire and the New Order, and she becomes the leader of the Resistance against the First Order, so she's um, always there, you know, for the good side. Luke hears her call, and he comes to save her, so he actually also trains her in the Force. But she's not a Jedi Knight per se, but she does know how to wield the Force. And he also trains uh, Rey Skywalker as, you know, the next generation. But um, really quick with Princess Leia, when he comes to save her, the way that he gets there is he teams up with Han Solo. Han Solo, on the other hand, here he is also, he's with Chewie, Chewbacca. They're best friends, they're on the Millennial Falcon, this is their ship, they're, this is the good guy's ship. The Millennial Falcon is always, you know, run by Han Solo and Chewie. And they have their own, they have their own uh, origin, they have Solo, Star Wars origin, and that's where you see Han Solo and Chewie become friends, and that's how you see how they get the Millennial Falcon, but once... Luke Leia join up with Han Solo. Um, Leia falls in love with Hans. Also, she can't love Luke because they're twins and related, and that would be incest. But Leia and Hans have a child. His name is Ben. Ben, you can think of him as Ben Skywalker or Ben Solo. He's technically good, and he's also trained by Luke. So Luke trains both Leia, Rey, and Ben. Ben, on the other hand, um, gets twisted by the Sith, and he joins the dark side just like his grandfather, Darth Vader, and he becomes Kylo Ren. So that's him as Kylo Ren, being a bad guy. That's him with no helmet, being a good guy, being Ben. And uh, he actually kills his own father, Hans, because he wants to eliminate all attachment and just be you know, not attach himself to Solo because he's good and channel his grandfather, Darth, even though Darth Vader also, at the end, he was kind of good. But um, majority of the three movies, he's kind of the bad guy where he turns around and becomes good at the end. Um, Rey, on the other hand, is mainly the good guy throughout the three movies. However, ironically, she's actually a Palpatine and the way that her genetic thing, her makeup, she's basically, she's, you could basically say she's either technically Palpatine's granddaughter, generally, if it's, if you're going by generations, but if you go by genetics, then I guess you can say Palpatine is her father, but Palpatine was pretty old, so he made a clone, and his clone, you know, had a kid with Ray's mom, here they are, they were murdered. Palpatine wanted to grab Rey and have her kill him out of revenge and anger. That way all of the Sith's energy and past Siths would flow into her and she could rule the Sith. However, she doesn't go along with that. You know, uses the light force, blah, blah, blah. The point is, is that um, she's technically Palpatine, but she goes throughout all the movies as... Ray, just Ray, and then at the end she takes the name Skywalker. So this plays into, we're going to go really quickly into the timeline. So there are three movies, little trilogy movies. They're called episodes. So episode one, two, three, four, five, six, episode seven, eight, nine. And the point is, is that the main character in episode one, two, three is like the first generation of Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader. In the sec four, five, six episode movies, you have the second generation, Anakin's children, Luke and Leia Skywalker, the twins. And Anakin isn't the main character in these movies, he's like the secondary character. And then in the third batch, seven, eight, nine episodes slash movies, you have Luke and Leia as secondary characters, while the primary characters are Rey and Ben, who are Skywalkers, but technically Rey is a Palpatine, and Ben is both a Skywalker and 
he's also Han Solo. That is the order of the movies. And I'm going to zoom in just so you can see them. So these movies happen. Episodes two and three. During this time, you have the animated series The Clone Wars, which has Anakin in here and his Padawan and um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Then right after the third movie, you have the Bad Batch animated series that came out recently. Um, this one isn't as focused on the Skywalkers. The ones that have the star aren't heavily focused on Skywalkers. The rest are focused on Skywalkers or their like immediate close friends family. Because then you have Solo and Obi-Wan Kenobi, which happen about the same time, which follows Han Solo, Luke's best friend, and it follows Obi-Wan Kenobi, the teacher of both Anakin and Luke. And then you have several more animated series where you have Star Wars Rebels. So that's the rebellion trying to take down the Empire right before four, five, six movies. And then during the fourth, you have Rogue One, a Star Wars story where they're trying to steal the Death Star plans to take out the first Death Star, aka Star Wars Death Star. After the sixth movie, some years after that, you have the Mandalorian series, which follows Mandy and his friends. Then right after this ends, right afterwards, you have Boba Fett, which will follow Boba Fett. It's coming out probably like 2021. Obi-Wan Kenobi's coming out 2022 probably. Bad Batch just came out on Disney+. Plus. Then you have three, the last three movies, 7, 8, 9. And during this time, you have the animated series Star Wars Resistance which follows Kaz and friends and they're kind of this show is interesting where majority of like the formula of all the movies is that they're trying to defeat the bad guys but Star Wars Resistance is different where it gives you a lot of Star Wars lore but they're also trying to like escape the bad guys so majority of this show is them like they want to be left alone and also follows Kaz being a resistance spy and him trying to get some spy material so it's a little different so if you want if you aren't as interested in skywalkers then i would recommend the shows that aren't closely related to them um, if you want a really good movie for understanding basic sky star wars things i would watch maybe star wars resistance i would also watch it it might for some people if they don't like seven eight nine movies they might actually like the series more and then if people do like the movies, then it follows the same timeline. So you'll see big events happen that happen in the movies. You see it happen in this show also. So that's a unique thing where they have that kind of thing. A bit like the how the Clone Wars was following 2-3. But that is the timeline of what's out right now for Star Wars. And then we're going to move on really quickly because I mentioned the Star Wars the weapons of mass destruction are these Death Stars, and I'll quickly explain them right now. And finally, we have the weapons of mass destruction, and in Star Wars, there are three. There's the first Death Star, the second Death Star, and Starkiller Base. The first and second Death Stars are Empire weapons, or New Order weapons, and then Starkiller Base is First Order and the difference in size is the first Death Star was very small. It was about the size of a very large ship. The second Death Star is a lot bigger. It's the size of a moon. I think it was built around a moon. And then the third one is made out of like a planet. So they, so ship size, moon size, planet size. And this one can destroy a city, for example, the first Death Star, while the last Starkiller base can destroy an entire planet or entire planets. Um, the second Death Star can maybe like take out half a planet or something or majority of a planet, but Starkiller base can destroy an entire planet very easily, while the first Death Star can only take out a normal sized city. Anyway, the there are a lot of like main character deaths around these Death Stars. So 
the first Death Star is the one that Luke saves Leia from, but um, Obi-Wan Kenobi sacrifices himself and he dies during the Battle of the First Death Star. Also, prior to the Death Star activation, the Rogue One movie, that is where the Rogue One team dies after they retrieve the plans of the first Death Star to find out like how to destroy it. The second Death Star is where uh, Darth Vader flips back to the light, comes back and becomes like Anakin because he says the whole like, Luke, I am your father, and he wants to save Luke from the second Death Star. And the second Death Star battle is where majority of the Jedi are killed. So after the second Death Star and after the fall of the Empire, the Jedi Knights are basically almost extinct. And this is where the Empire falls and the New Republic starts. However, uh, Palpatine, even though they think that they killed him, he's not actually dead because he comes back in the last trilogy of movies, aka episodes 7, 8, 9. And after, you know, from the ashes of the Empire, you have the First Order, and they create Starkiller Base with, you know, Kylo Ren helping lead that. And this is where Kylo Ren kills Hans, his father, um, when they take out Starkiller Base. So Hans dies on this planet base. And Rey helps take this out. So that they stop destroying planets. Anyway, those are the weapons of mass destruction, aka Star Wars's namesake. So that was the last thing that we were going to talk about in this recap. Majority of this recap is things that might be confusion points or might be good refreshers to people, maybe. So hopefully this helps. Um, and I can help answer any questions. Um, I haven't watched all of the material though, so I might not be able to answer all the questions, but do my best. Mainly, I watched some Clone Wars, uh, some Rebels. I watched Rogue One, Star Wars Story. I watched Solo. I watched The Mandalorian, and then I watched 789 along with Star Wars Resistance. So I haven't seen these movies yet or Bad Batch or anything but uh, it's pretty it's pretty like maybe I'll get I'll, I'll get to them but they're since they've been pretty sp spoiled and I don't know lower graphics I haven't watched them yet but I might go back and watch them later anyway I hope this video was helpful and you got something out of it and I hope to see you guys on the next video uh, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.